Next question is from the Bad Mad Scientist. How would you program PE for students in online schools right now? God, this could be a great opportunity for trainers right here. Well, so so here's a, so there's some interesting challenges with this, right? So my kids are distance learning, and I'm watching them do PE, right? Yeah. So I got my daughter; she's in fifth grade. My son's a sophomore in high school, and so here's the experiences that I'm seeing so far with my daughter. They have the the Zoom camera on them on the desk, and the teacher says, "Okay, everybody, go down and do." I don't know, you know, 15 sit-ups, right? And so here's what the girls do, because uh, my sister, my, my daughter will do this with a couple of her friends. They'll go down below where the camera didn't see them, and they'll just sit on the floor <laughs> and wait. And then they come up, and then they do it or whatever. And oh, you see man. a lot of this, like, do your push-ups and <laughs> out of the you know, range of the camera or whatever. And Now, my son, on the other hand, he's they're giving him an app. They're like, do this workout. And now you look at the app, and the workouts are just, you know, 35 uh, push-ups, 50 burpees, Jumping do it for jacks. time. Yeah, yeah just everything. insanity. And of course, they're also, unless I'm watching them, him, it, they're also kind of slacking off. And here's the big problem. This is always the big problem with fitness when it comes to kids. You can't, you, you don't just tell them to do exercises. That's boring as hell. It's like trying to teach a kid any subject and making it boring as hell. They're not going to learn history. They're not going to learn math. They're not going to learn science if you just tell them to do stuff and make it super boring. They just don't engage or learn. So yeah. rule number one when you're training kids is you have to find a way to engage them. So like an, a simple example would be, okay, let's see who can stand on one foot for 30 seconds. Put the camera on you. Let's see who can do this the longest and whatever. Make prizes. And the prizes could be, they don't even have to be a prize. It could literally be points. You know, you got five stars, you got seven stars. Kids like to yeah. keep track of How long can you it. sit in a squat? Yeah, how long can you sit in a squat or balance on one foot, see if you can tie your shoe. Let's see who can do this. Like make it fun and engaging so that they can kind of not just compete with each other, but see how each other's doing and make it really enjoyable. Otherwise, the whole like, you know, you yeah, you could take them through a mobility class, but if you make it about mobility, you're you're gonna get a bunch of fifth and sixth graders who are gonna be like, Yeah, I'm not doing this. I'm I really think there's a huge opportunity right here. Definitely. Um, for trainers. I mean, you guys are starting. I know both of you are doing this right, right? You guys both have kids that are in pods now yeah. mm -hmm. where they're like grouped with four or five families. And a trainer's hourly is somewhere between $50 to $150 an hour. I don't think it would be hard to convince you parents that have five of you, like, hey, I'm going to do a Zoom call with all five of your kids yeah. and divide my hourly, totally. 100 bucks by five, each parent paying 25 bucks to know my uh, they're going to be with a trainer for an hour who's totally. going to engage them in exercise. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think there's a huge opportunity for trainers out there that are looking for ways to make money right now because maybe their gym is closed and then they're in the middle of transitioning into being this online trainer is to find parents. you got to have a family member or a friend or somebody who are doing similar things that Justin and Sal are doing with these pods and getting them together. And that makes it affordable for the parents. It's a lot easier to convince them. It may not be as easy to convince one parent to pay you $100 an hour to take one kid, but if they're in pods of three, five, or 10, I mean, much easier to convince all the parents to go together and split the cost of the hourly for the trainer. And then the trainer is responsible for keeping them engaged, making it fun. That's where I would lean. Yeah. And, and it, again, make games out of it. You know, I, one of the most effective people I ever saw for doing this, I used to have a, a friend that um, I, he actually was a client at first. Then we became friends and he was a soccer coach. And he had these camps that he would run up in, in Los Gatos where he would teach kids uh, mm -hmm. how to play soccer. And he just became so successful through word of mouth. And a lot of it had to do with how engaging he was. And he would have these fun games. It's like when you say like Karate Kid, where he's making him do something, but he's actually learning another skill. Yeah. Except it was fun. Karate Kid, I know it wasn't that fun. <laughs> yeah, it was chores. Yeah, exactly. He was having a lot of fun with these kids. Like, here's another Sand example. Yeah. You could You could have kids bring a blow up a balloon, tie it off, and then say, okay, let's pop these in the air and see so you can keep it up in the air the longest. And, and yeah. you see the kids run around move. Like you have to keep things engaging and fun. You Relay can't, races. You yeah. can't train them like you train adults. That's yeah. the big mistake. Yeah, and I think too. I mean, if if you're a parent and you're just trying to kind of make sense out of all this stuff too, like I, one thing for me besides like I, I think there's massive opportunity for a trainer to come in and, and be like a helpful guide to kind of relieve a little bit of the stress and like you know program the whole thing for you. Uh, but for for me personally. I've been investing in things like cargo nets. I don't know if you have access to this in a backyard. If you do, like this is something where I'm I'm trying to set up uh, more of a play 
playground experience that they're not going to get now. And, and so I got I got pull up bars out between trees. I have things. I have a a, a, a a trampoline where they go out and they they express a lot of their energy outside. And it's designated. You know, this hour block is you guys are outside and you're you're moving. You're doing things. You're having fun. You're it's recess in a sense. So even if you're not getting like the actual physical education at least the expression of energy like that's something that like kids just need that man they need to get out and get that energy out completely 